It's my life. It's my life. It's my love. Like, without it, I generally do not know what I'd be doing. No matter what gets thrown at her, she'll succeed through it. She's the best in the country, man. Going to go over there and she's going to absolutely kill her. She's probably up there as one of the best female wrestlers of our generation. She wrestled differently than every other female. I was a big fan with, and I used to watch it all the time with my grandfather. Um, like he would take me up after school and. Whenever my nan was in the kitchen, he'd like turn around and be like, oh, let's just watch wrestling, watch it. So we'd watch wrestling and be like, oh my god, no, this is so cool. And then my nan would come in and we'd have to switch it on to like horse racing or something. And a couple of times she caught him, so she'd like hit him with a newspaper. He was like, oh, you could do that. He's the biggest influence in my life, is my grandfather. Like, I'm doing this partly for him as well as myself. If it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be no Nixon Newell. Like, they would just be another girl in the valley, just staying there and doing nothing with her life. And then he died in 2005, and I kind of lost any interest in wrestling for like a year. I was like, I don't want to do it. Like, I just don't like watching her anymore because he's not there to watch her with me. And then when I turned 16, I found the school, and I was like, give it a go. Don't want to play football anymore. Done that for 11 years. Let's go a different path. And then it just escalated. The first time I met was a kamikaze pro show. It was in uh, Bourneville in Birmingham. Um, it was right at the beginning of 2014 and it was just complete off chance. Uh, I think the promoter had nothing to do with me or Damien Dunn, who was also on the show. We were just left over and he put us in an intergender tag. She teamed, uh, he teamed with Nadia Sapphire and I teamed with Nixon. Uh, and that was the first time I'd ever met her. Didn't really know anything about her. But we were determined that these two girls who we didn't know we were going to make them do a bunch of crazy stuff and it'd be really funny. Uh, and she was super anxious and like really green because I think she'd only been resting uh, like a year at that point or something. So she was like really worried, really nervous about it. But it, it came off well. When I first started, the men were really scared to hit me because I was a girl. Um, I basically had to stand in front of the class and go, look, I'm here to do exactly the same thing you're doing. Do not treat me like a girl. Just treat me like another wrestler. Like The thing with intergender wrestling, I think, is the argument is uh, it's not believable or uh, it just seems it seems silly or, or stuff like that. Um, but to be fair, there's, there's so many things in the art form of professional wrestling that aren't believable and that are silly. For the every 500 people that'll tell me they don't agree with intergender wrestling, there's one person who it means the world to and those people mean more to me than the 500 others. What I do is, it makes me happy, it makes other people happy, so I stand by it. <laughs> there was a show I was at and people actually left the show because I got hit by a man. But I was the only woman on the show. What did they want me to do? Like, just stand there and be like, oh yay, do something, Woo. I think people need to realise that it's wrestling, it's an art form. Like, I, I love intergender wrestling, I think if it's done right, it's great, I don't know why people would have a problem with it. It's not intergender, she, it's just two people, she's amazing, she's on anyone's level. It's not about gender when it comes to people like Nixon. The people who have this open mind about wrestling and open mind about the, the art form of wrestling are the ones that you see succeeding globally everywhere. And the people who have these dated, fixed rules in their heads are usually the ones who stay in their little bubble and, and that's all they do. We enjoy what we do, so any criticism that comes our way, like, we can take it, we can just shrug it off because we know we, it might not be for everybody.
some people might not like women's wrestling in general or intergender wrestling, but you kind of please everybody. And as long as the majority of crowd are out there and they're entertained by what we do, then I think you can say we're happy. I was so focused on just wrestling. Like I just wanted to wrestle. I didn't care who I was in the ring with. I just wanted to wrestle. Um, so there was no like reservations or anything like that. Like I just wanted to wrestle. But looking back now, I would have liked more women to wrestle back then. But I think if I had, I'd be totally different to where I am now. So I'm thankful for the way it did. But we'll start with like hardly any women. There's 200 people in this nightclub tonight who are suspending their disbelief voluntarily. They're coming here and they're choosing to be entertained by professional wrestling. The argument can be made that there's no reason for it to not happen because I think when people throw around things like, oh, it's just not believable or you can't have a man versus a woman, like it's, it's, such, a, it's such a dated mentality. Like maybe that was the case in the, the 70s and 80s and, and even the 90s, but I don't think it is now. It like registered in my head then that I was like, oh, that's the last time I'm gonna take a Canadian destroyer off her. And that was a bit like, oh, I got a bit emotional, I had to fight it back. to forgive things I've done over the last 24 months but just for like a three minute interval that would be amazing people know our history but a lot of people might not know that two years ago there was an infinity tournament and there were seven people announced for that tournament and the management were clambering for number eight and they came to me and they said who do you think should be number eight in the infinity tournament and Nixon was tearing up in kamikaze and SWA and all the small local indies and I put her name forward. <laughs> but it wasn't as simple as just putting a name forward and getting in. Back then there'd never been a female in the cage of the planet. There'd never been a female in Fight Club Pro. And the people in charge, they didn't know if it would work. They said, what if, what if people don't like a girl in the cage? What if it doesn't, what if it doesn't go well? 
And I said, put her in that cage and she'll show everyone exactly what she can do. And for the last two years, she's been in this ring, not as a female wrestler, just as a wrestler, the same as everyone else. She's took the train fight with Mono and she's gone to Japan and she's gone to America and she's gone to Germany and she's represented Fight Club Pro, all of you, all around the world. Not only have you been a good friend for the last few years, you've also broken down barriers and not many people can say that. So for every time we tagged as the Vulture Squad, or every time I picture your face in as Luchador or the Explorer. I want to thank you for making this place better and making me a better wrestler. Good luck where you go next. Every single person in this building is going to miss you, but we're all proud of you. that you actually get to say what you really feel about anything in wrestling, especially the indie wrestling. I think it's important, I think it's important for the, the crowd as well to know, not just like the impact she's had on me, but the impact she's had on Fight Club Pro, because without someone going out there and candidly explaining it, it's stuff that would just pass people by. Like, I think it's important to explain that stuff to people. Because like for the first like entire of his speech, I couldn't understand what he was saying, because the mic was like, day. I was good until he went, you made me a better wrestler. I was like, you bastard. Promoter from Southside picks us up, takes us to the venue. And he's like, "Oh, you're wrestling this girl!" Like, and just hyping her up. He goes, "I think she's gonna be really good. I think she's gonna be really good." I'm like, "Okay, okay." She is my first big name, and I have never been so nervous for a match in my entire life. Like it was. I just got off a flight, and I'm trying to take a nap. I think Johnny and I went into this like child's toy storage room so I'm like napping and anytime you moved the light came on so it's like anytime one of us slightly budged so it's like no sleep miserable I was good going up to the venue turned up I was like yeah no nervous oh, I'm being like a, I'm being a star I'm being professional and then managers went don't be shit I was like oh fuck no, I'm shit I'm really shit I had times, when, and I, we just talked about this the other day, I had times where I was going, she has to think I'm a bitch. She has to. Because I'm sitting here hardly talking to her. I'm trying to function as a human, and I can't. And she probably thinks I don't want to do this match, and I'm stuck up, and I'm just like, a bitch. And then she goes, oh, I thought you thought the same thing about me, because I was scared, and I didn't want to come up to you and be like, hey, so, what do you want to do? And the match was awful because I was very shit. But it was like great, even the first one and then we wrestled the second time and it was just like, kept getting better and all I wanted to do was wrestle her. 
she's helped me out like a lot more than she'll ever realise. Like even just talking to me online, giving me some, giving me some advice there, and then she's always like giving me feedback on my work, which again she doesn't have to do. So when Zaki was like, like, oh, would, who do you want to work? I was like, I, I need my last match at Fight Club to be against Candice, like just to be like, this is how far I've come since we first wrestled. And it's a lot of it is down to you helping me, so that's the reason I picked her for my last match. Oh, no pressure, no pressure at all. It's like it's hard to be a uh, last of something or picked to do something. Like if it was just some last match at some random place, it's one thing. But when it's something, it would be the equivalent. I think of me asking her to be my last match at PWG, where it's like, it's this place that you've made your home and you've worked really hard to be there and it's I have so much pressure, <laughs> so much.
you don't realize how much I thank you and how much I love you. to better things like it's it's not like you know, she's done it's not she's retiring from wrestling she's going on to bigger and better things but i was just like just be happy of what you've done here like you've helped build this company just remember that like everything you've done has helped everyone around you like everything you've done for fight club attack and all those places you've helped build that company just for being you i don't think anybody could replace her um she's a really special person husband always tells people the best advice he gives everybody is they say, oh, what kind of advice can you give me like I can make it one day? And he tells them to just be a good person. And after he kept saying it to people, I was going, you know what, like he's right. At the end of the day, if you're a good person, then everything should work out. She's good. I think she's going to change the game. I Like genuinely, you know, when you look at people, and obviously over the years you've kind of known people that have gone and done really great things. It's like with Nixon, like she's going to be women's wrestling in a couple of years. She's not gonna have any difficulties. She's gonna take on everything so well. I think we're all just so proud of her. And they see her actually getting to that point where she's going is amazing. And I just can't even wish that upon somebody better. It wasn't real until today. Literally today, I had a phone call off my mother going, oh, there's a package here for you. And I'm like, oh, is it really? And she's like, yeah. I was like, just show me, just show me. And as soon as she showed me, I was like, oh, it's like, it's happening now. Like, it's, it's real. Like, it's scary. It's very, very scary. And, but I'm excited. Like, I finally achieved what my grandfather wanted me to achieve. And, I've done it all off, like, all off my own back, like, start a training, I, I drive two hours to the training sessions just to do a session every two, three weeks. To now, being up with this incredible opportunity and seeing the world is, is I, I'm just ridiculously happy right now.